welcome to a bit more Yorkshire Brass. Yes, another week's gone by and today is a bit of a special show. It's my 50th online programme on the YouTube platform. Where did that go? 50 lovely shows with thousands of wonderful requests. Thank you as always for all of them and we started off today with a request by a regular listener and good friend of the show, Mr Jonathan Wilson. It was the fabulous introduction to Act 3 of Lohengran by Richard Wagner, played by the Black Dyke Band. A great way to set off two more hours of your fabulous requests. Thanks, as I say, for getting in touch with them and some wonderful stuff. You always do. You never, ever let us down, do you? Uh, we've got the usual things just to let you know, one or two bits of information about some up-and-coming concerts, outdoor ones, to share with you as well. Let's get cracking uh, with the next request. The first March of the week, we're going to Moorthorpe. Andrew's been in touch, loving the show online, and listened to it sometimes three or four times a week. Thanks for doing it. My pleasure. My pleasure. And uh, the march that you've chosen was written by Clive Barraclough. The title was half his son's name and half his daughter's name. The Brickhouse and Rastrick Band are playing here. The title of the march, Simmerain. <laughs> and Rastrick Band playing Clive Barraclough's March Simmerain. Thanks to Andrew in Moorthorpe for that request. More marches to come later. Next up we've got this week's overture. We're going to Philip. Philip's in lovely Ben Ridding and he's chosen a piece of music which premiered way back in 1791. September in fact of that year and it was at Theatre auf der Weiden in Vienna. Mozart, the composer, and this work premiered just two months before his sad and premature death. It stood the test of time, brilliant piece of music, and the Foden's Band are playing here for you, Philip. 
the magic flute. Thank you. 
Magic Flute by Mozart. This week's overture was played by the Foden's Band for Philip in Ben Reading. Thanks for that request, Philip. Cracker of a piece of music. Robert's been in touch from Greenland. Now then, Euler, can I say what a great idea Champions of Brass is? And add my uh, good wishes to everybody and saying I will definitely be taking in one or some of the concerts when they are available. How about having a feature on one of your programmes with the soloists on the recordings being people who are going to play in this wonderful band. Yes, Champions of Brass, um, the announcement was made a couple of weeks ago and there are some absolutely quality musicians in there. I'm going to share four people with you today on solos who are in this band. Brian Taylor is one of them. Brian's here with the Fairy Band and the first of the four solos which we're playing today for Robert in Greetland is by Ronald Binge, the great British composer, English composer from Derby. This is a beautiful melody. It was the theme tune to The Secret Garden, the BBC children's programme, which I remember well from the 1970s. The title is The Watermill.
the wonderful sound of Brian Taylor with the fairy band playing Ronald Binger's The Watermill. Brian will be a member of the front row, the solo cornet bench in Champions of Brass, which is hoping to have its inaugural concert in the autumn, providing everything's OK, of course. Robert in Greetland intends to be there, and he came up with a suggestion of having four solos from people who will be in the band. So we've got more to come in a little while. What else have I got for you now? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I've got a foodie fact, a foodie fact for you. How about this? <laughs> it's not about the size of the portion. Yes, <laughs> good one. This is Steve in Leipzig in Germany. It's not about the size of the portion. It's not about how many chips. It's not a poem, by the way. It's not about how much kebab meat you get. It's about the quality of the offering, I think. It is a bit of a poem, isn't it? Well done, Steve, well done. Uh, it's very true. It is very true. I'm not bothered. Fish and chips comes to mind on this one, and you go into some fish and chip shops, and they give you enough chips to feed three people. Um, and they give you a fish, which is quite large, but the fish inside it is not of a good standard. I would rather have a much smaller fish, which is white and flaky, with a lovely batter, and a smaller portion of chips. And if I find a fish and chip shop that does that, and serves what many of you might think are a small portion... I'll either get a second fish or another bit, another, another lot of chips. My dad used to do this. There was a, a fish and chip shop near us, and he'd have two fish and a portion of chips. They were small portions, but they were blooming good. Oh, yes. You've got it right, Steve. Absolutely. What have you chosen for us to hear on today's programme? You've chosen some brilliant music by Keith Richards and Mick Jagger, and this arrangement for Brass Band is by Alan Catherall. Whatever Alan has done for Brass Band absolutely works. The Sellers Engineering Band are playing here, and the choice of Steve in Leipzig in Germany, Ruby Tuesday.
brilliant piece of music, isn't it? Ruby Tuesday was played there by the Sellers Engineering Band. Alan Catherell's arrangement for Brass Band was requested by Steve in Leipzig in Germany. Steve emailed yorkshirebrass at gmail.com to tell me all about the size of portions, chips and kebab meat and quality of cooking. It's not about the size <coughs> of the portion in that respect. You, you need to have quality of food. And I agree with you, Steve, 100%. Robert in Greetland, it's back to you now. Another soloist, another great musician who is going to be involved in the Champions of Brass project, which is going to begin later this year. That musician is Morgan Griffiths. Morgan's going to be the solo euphonium player with the band. And we're going to hear from him now with accompaniment from the Yorkshire Building Society band. This is a, a classic piece of music. We're going back to Mozart actually. We heard from him with the overture this week. Well now this is normally about a bassoon. Morgan Griffiths plays the Allegro from the Bassoon Concerto by Mozart. <laughs> Thank you. 
Excellent stuff from Morgan Griffiths with the Yorkshire Building Society Band. Mozart Allegro from the Bassoon Concerto. Our featured soloists, well, four of them anyway today, are all going to be playing in Champions of Brass. Morgan Griffiths will head up the euphonium section and he'll be joined on second euphonium by Billy Miller. Great player and a great chap. Looking forward to it. I'm involved in the project as well. I'm going to be comparing these brilliant concerts. Next up, we've got Mike and Julie. They're in York, now they're Neule. We're looking forward to some outdoor concerts, and we note that there have been some provisional dates for the Weatherby Riverside Bandstand concerts. Yes, the, Wever the uh, Weatherby Riverside Bandstand Trust have a summer season in 2021, and uh, a number of bands on the list. I would suggest you follow them on social media because a lot of the dates so far are provisional. Bands are not yet back rehearsing, so certainly some of the earlier dates probably will not happen. Uh, but Saturdays and Sundays through the summer, you'll be able to hear some of our wonderful brass bands in action at the lovely Weatherby Riverside Bandstand. What have Mike and Julie chosen for their request? Can we have a bit of Gordon Langford? Well, it's always a... Uh, a silly question on this programme because whatever Gordon Langford wrote for Brass Band absolutely worked, never did a bad one. And uh, we haven't played this one on one of my shows for a while, so thanks for doing this one. The Black Dyke Mills Band are playing here, and it's one of uh, Gordon's many montages. This is New World Fantasy. <laughs> Thank you. 
Gordon Langford's New World Fantasy was played by the Black Dyke Mills Band for Mike and Julie, who are in York and very much looking forward to attending some of the concerts at the Weatherby Riverside Bandstand. There are other concerts out and about on social media, particularly some in the Leeds area. Uh, we'll keep you posted as we go along. Next up, Susan in Howarth. A lovely simple email. Thanks, Oily, for bringing us the shows. It makes our week at difficult times a little bit easier. It's my pleasure. And I've said so now for the last 50 weeks. Yes, it's our 50th online show today on the YouTube platform with a bit more Yorkshire brass. Susan in Howarth, lovely request. The Shepherd Group Band are playing here. Derek Broadbent made this arrangement for Brass Band of Music by Stanley Myers from the film The Deer Hunter. Cavatina. Yeah, it was a staple of many brass band concerts in the late 70s and through the 80s and still gets played to this day. Cavatina, the theme from The Deer Hunter by Stanley Myers. The arrangement by Derek Broadbent was played there by the Shepherd Group brass band for Susan, who is in Howarth. Next up, uh, lovely to hear from Jack French. Jack, thank you very much for a, a very kind and lovely message. Uh, Jack says, could you please play Derek Bourgeois' arrangement of The Sorcerer's Apprentice? 
I played on the front row at the Imps in 1983, and this was played at the Royal Albert Hall Mass Bands concert, which featured Yorkshire Imperial Metals, St Austell, and Besses of the Barn. Uh, there is an LP of this concert, but I don't know if there are any other recordings of the piece. Well, I'm going to play this one by the Hammond Saltair Band. I think this is the one that you're looking for. I can't re refer back to the LP to check that it is the same piece, but I'm hopeful that it is. If it isn't, we'll have another go. But it's worth a listen anyway. Uh, Jack also says many thanks for doing these programmes uh, that you're doing. Keep up the good work. Thanks, Jack, very much indeed. Let's have a listen to this one. Uh, the music by Dukas, played by the Hammond Saltair Band, The Sorcerer's Apprentice, as requested by Jack French.
The Sorcerer's Apprentice by Dukas was played there by the Hammond Saltair Band. We were playing that for Jack French, who remembers the piece of music from a, a Royal Albert Hall Mass Band's concert with the Yorkshire Imperial Metal, St Hostel and Bessers of the Ban Bands. Jack, lovely to hear from you. Thank you very much indeed for that one. I, I saw something interesting this week about Downing Street, and I, I, and I really want to share this with you. 10 Downing Street... Um, used to be known as Five Downing Street. The numbers were were, were redone in 1779. And um, prior to it becoming parliamentary residence, there were some very famous people lived there. The Countess of Yarmouth lived there in 1688. Influential people as well. Uh, Lord Lansdowne lived there from 1692. And the Earl of Grantham lived there from 1699. Let me tell you, if I may, that in the early 1730s, then Prime Minister, First Lord of the Treasury, Robert Walpole, reached an agreement with the current incumbent to move out so that the Downing Street residences could become part of uh, the government uh, in respect of, of living quarters. Nothing unusual, really, in that. It's what it is. It's history and... Um, you know, it, it's become history ever since, really. We've, we've written stories about Downing Street since then. But the last public owner of the property, which is now 10 Downing Street, which was 5 Downing Street, was a gentleman called Mr Chicken. His surname was Chicken, just to let you know. What have we got next? Yeah, we're going to Caracas in Venezuela. Caracas. David Wilson, how are you? Thanks for a lovely message, as always. Um, I'm um, I'm very sad to hear uh, that your mum has been hospitalised and um, she's 90, says David. We send her good wishes. Uh, it is a mess, says David. I can't get back to see her because I'm not allowed. Um, but any chance you can play some music as a result and send her good wishes. Yes, absolutely. Sadly, I've not got the version that you were looking for because it was a, a recorded programme and we can't get the recording in to uh, a bit more Yorkshire Brass because of the copyright on it. But what I can do is play you a super recording by the Grimethorpe Colliery Band. Gary Cutt is conducting on this recording. Gary is going to be conducting Champions of Brass. I think this piece of music may well be on the menu because I know it's one of Gary's favourites. Um, so for David Wilson in Caracas in Venezuela and for his mum with good wishes, the music of Nicholas Brodsky. This comes from the student prince. Gough Richards made the arrangement and taking us to halfway in this week's A Bit More Yorkshire Brass. I'll walk with God.
Music from the Student Prince, I'll Walk With God, was played by the Grimethorpe Colliery Band and conducted on that recording by Gary Cutt, who will, of course, conduct Champions of Brass. The music was by Nicholas Brodsky and arranged by Gough Richards. On with the second part of this week's show now and another march to start. Dennis and Barbara are in Huddersfield. We heard you play this on the radio the other week. Um, they've given me the date and I've looked back to make sure it is the right piece of music. Can we hear it again on a bit more Yorkshire Brass? It's that good. You certainly can. The music is by Giacomo Meyerbeer and arranged by Howard Lorriman. It's the Coronation March played by the Black Dyke Band. <laughs> sound of the Black Dyke Band playing Maya Beer's Coronation March. Thanks to Dennis and Barbara in Huddersfield. They emailed yorkshirebrass at gmail.com. You can also get in touch by joining our Facebook group, our private members group called Yorkshire Brass. And once you're in, if you send us a message to join, we'll accept you. And then you can send messages through there. You can also direct message on um, Twitter. At Yorkshire Brass is our Twitter handle. And that's what Ian in Sale did. Ian's funny. Funny, funny, funny. 
And <laughs> he sent in a great request for a great match, by the way. Uh, but Ian says, whatever you do, never wear brogues after a brass band concert if you're going to go out drinking. Brogues look fantastic with a brass band uniform. Second only, in my mind, to a, to a pair of uh, shiny Peyton shoes. Shiny Peyton shoes look brilliant. Uh, but brogues are very smart shoes. But Ian says, I once remember somebody uh, going on a brass band concert and not getting changed afterwards other than taking the jacket off, just putting the blazer on and, uh, and tie and then going on a bit of a bender. And uh, the result wasn't good. The result wasn't good at all. The brogues were unusable afterwards um, because what had gone into the holes on the brogues couldn't be fetched. Oh, God. Uh, I can imagine Ian in sale. Thank you very much. Never wear brogues after a band job, says Ian. Wear them if you have to do. Anyway, Ian, your request. Could you please play me the signature march of the great CWS Manchester band? You've not said what it was, so I hope... I've got the right one, I'm pretty sure I have. Um, the March is by Maurice Johnston and played here by the Rigid Containers Group Band. The title of the march, County Palatine.
The Rigid Containers Group Band were playing the signature march of the great CWS Manchester Band. The name of that march, County Palatine, and the composer Maurice Johnston. Uh, Maurice Johnston also wrote Pennine Way, by the way, as well. Another great signature march from another great band, the Bickershaw Colliery Band. Requested there uh, by Ian in sale. And another reminder, never wear brogues after a band job. If you're going to go out drinking... Because if you throw up all over them, they're a devil to clean. Oh dear, oh dear, how dare you. Back to uh, Champions of Brass now, and another solo. Uh, Robert in Greetland came up with this idea for us to feature four soloists who are going to be in this wonderful uh, band. It's made up of people who have won all sorts of things in the brass banding world and uh, are just wanting to play, to entertain and enjoy the camaraderie that Champions of Brass will bring both to the players and to the audiences. Next up is the great Alan Morrison. Alan made this arrangement. He's playing himself here with the Grimethorpe Colliery Band on a piece of music which I know is loved by many people, particularly by people dedicating it to their dads. Oh, my papa. Oh My Papa by Alan Morrison and the Grimethorpe Colliery Band. Alan's own arrangement was played there. Looking forward to seeing Alan very soon when he will be one of five wonderful players on the solo cornet bench in Champions of Brass. Next up, we're going to Poulton Lafayette to Jim. Uh, this piece of music is a classic, says Jim, and I think the Black Dyke Band have recorded it. You're absolutely right, they have. Daryl Barry made this arrangement of music by Hector Berlio. It's a French title, says Jim. What exactly does it mean? Well, it's from Symphony Fantastique, which obviously is the Fantastic Symphony. That's the easy bit to work out. The rest of it, when you translate it, literally translates as March to Death. Ooh, goodness. Yes, it does. Let's have a listen to it. March au supplice. March to Death from the Fantastic Symphony by Hector Berlio. The Black Dyke Band are indeed playing here.
Marshal Suplice from Symphony Fantastique by Hector Berlio. Daryl Barry's arrangement was played by the Black Dyke Band for Jim in Poulton Le File. Thanks, Jim. Again, lovely to hear from you. And the final solo of the four musicians who are going to be in Champions of Brass, uh, Robert in Greetland came up with this great idea. Uh, we're to hear the flugel solo now by John Island. Well, John Island wrote the original music and Steve Robson has transcribed it into a flugel solo for brass band. We're to hear now from Lucy Cutt with the Brickhouse and Rastrick Band. Lucy uh, will be a very welcome member of Champions of Brass, great player and playing a lovely piece of music here. Love Unknown. <laughs>
Lucy Cook playing there on the flugelhorn, wonderful sound with the Brickhouse and Rastrick Band. Steve Robson's arrangement of John Ireland's Love Unknown. Four soloists today, all four of them are going to be in Champions of Brass. Brian Taylor was the first. He's going to be on the solo cornet bench. Morgan Griffiths on the euphonium. He's going to be the principal euphonium player. Alan Morrison's going to join Brian Taylor on the solo cornet bench. And uh, Lucy Cutt, the lovely Lucy Cutt, on the flugel horn. Uh, another concert which I can tell you about for Sunday the 6th of June. An outdoor concert, and this has been verified as COVID compliant. Um, it's at Almondbury Wesleyan's Cricket Ground in K Lane in Almondbury near Huddersfield. Picnic at the Proms features the Black Dyke Band and the Huddersfield Choral Society as well as the soprano Martine Grimson. Tickets are £20 and uh, they can be arranged via the band, via the Huddersfield Choral Society. Details on their website. Uh, you can also telephone 07831 365259 or from the box office mark.bins b i w n s at hoyer-group.com that's mark.bins at hoyer-group.com uh, it's uh, a picnic bring your own picnic blanket and chairs it's all socially distanced and outdoor should be a good do it will be with the black dyke band and the huddersfield choral society involved dan in hebden is next. Now I check with this. This is Hebden, as in Hebden near Skipton, not Hebden Bridge. And uh, Dan wants to hear a recording by the Yorkshire Imperial Band of the theme music to the Pink Panther. Dan says, I think this is a brilliant arrangement and uh, the best of the bunch. Let's have a listen. It's called In the Pink. <laughs>
the Yorkshire Imperial Band playing In the Pink, requested by Dan in Hebden. Another email, yorkshirebrass at gmail.com, the email address to get those messages in. Please do get them in early. Some of the shows now up to number 55 and 56 have got requests on them. Um, so it's difficult if we get them in during the week before the show to fit them in for that week, particularly if they are dated requests. If they're just generic and you're happy to have it on any week, that's grand. Not a problem. Test piece time. Back to Keith Brown in New Jersey in the United States of America. Keith's still on the lookout for a good pork pie. Um, I think you will be, my friend, unless you can find someone. Or do it yourself. That's the other option. Um, is have a, go, have a go yourself if you're into that sort of thing. And you never know might become popular in the States. Uh, you sent me a list of test pieces some time ago. This is the third one on the list. We've played the other two already, the Corsair and uh, Le, Le Roi D, the King of E, which uh, is just a magnificent piece of music. And the Corsair, when we played that as well, uh, got lots of good feedback. This one takes us back to the Nationals in 1975. Music by Canadian composer Robert Farnan. The BNFL band are playing here. Richard Evans is conducting on this recording of Un Vie de Matelot, A Sailor's Life. <laughs>
This week's test piece, and Vida Matalo, in brackets, A Sailor's Life, by Robert Farnan, was played by the BNFL band, conducted by Richard Evans. Thanks to Keith Brown in New Jersey, in the US of A, for that particular request. Pam, I've not forgotten you, Flower. Your pick this week is our hymn tune, and a lovely one too. Um, it's in the Red Hymn Book, number 38, uh, but this arrangement is by Ray Stedman Allen and played by the Brickhouse and Rastrick Band. The lovely hymn tune is called Heifredol. <laughs> This week's hymn tune was Pam's Pick. Our Pam picked Heifredol. The arrangement there, played by the Brickhouse and Rastrick Band, was by Ray Stedman Allen. I've got another bit of information to share with you, which you may or may not know. Uh, the words labrosones and labrophones uh, refer to instruments played by causing vibrations with the lips. Yes, brass instruments. Labrosones and labrophones. They are Latin and Greek elements within those words, which mean lip and sound, just to let you know. But somehow, the, the, if I read this name out to you, an imaginary band that I've made up, uh, the Brightport and Maryside Labrophone Band. <laughs> just doesn't sound right, does it? The Brightport and Maryside Labrophone Band. The Brightport and Maryside Brass Band certainly does. Um, but if you look those words up, labrosones and labrophones, um, they very much refer to the brass band movement, just to let you know. We're just about there for another week. Thank you so much once again for listening. Brilliant requests, as always. Keep them coming, yorkshirebrass at gmail.com on the email. Uh, Yorkshire Brass is the name of our Facebook group. If you're not a member of that private group, please do join and you can then send messages in with your requests on. And you can also follow us on Twitter, at Yorkshire Brass. Our final request today is from Stephen Webster. Stephen, thank you very much. Lovely to hear from you again. And uh, a fabulous piece of music. How about the Pines of Rome, or the Pines of the Appian Way? Fantastic piece of music with the soldiers marching towards you and then dying away again. Yeah, it starts quiet. Let me say that the first 30 seconds... If you've not got your volume turned up, you might not think there's a right lot going on. But there are. The timps are there and there's a bit of a rhythm. So uh, don't think we've disappeared. We haven't. We're absolutely still here. And it comes to an almighty crescendo. 
at the end. This version doesn't really die away too much at the end because that's not what we do in brass band finales, is it? Howard Snell made this arrangement for brass band of the music by Otto Rasfige and Howard's conducting the Britannia Building Society Band. Thanks for listening to a bit more Yorkshire Brass with me, David Hoyle, once again. See you next week with show number 51. But we do finish today with the Pines of Rome. Ta-ra! <laughs> <laughs>